Hello everyone, welcome to class. Here we are with the part one of the chapter number one. What is chemistry about? In this chapter, we will be discussing the basics of chemistry, how it began. We will also discuss about the various famous or eminent personalities related to the field of chemistry and their achievements. Beginning with the definition itself, what is chemistry? The chemical question arises here. We are going to study or begin this subject here. Class sixth onward, you have this new subject with you, chemistry. So, what is basically chemistry? It is an important branch of science, and in this branch of science, what we are studying, we are studying the various substances and their transformation. So, the definition is chemistry is the study of substances and their transformations. What is the meaning of the word substances and their transformations? We will be discussing in the upcoming part now. So, what are substances? Each and everything around us actually is a kind of a substance. That is, we can say matter only. Whatever around us, whatever objects are around us, even on, uh, even our own body also is a type of matter. They have given certain examples like air, water, pen, pencil, toy. Each and everything is made up of matter. What is matter? Anything that takes up space and has mass is called as matter. So, whatever uh, is... Uh, any object around us which occupies some space to keep it and it is having certain amount of mass it is called as matter like example you can take air is a type of a matter yes air is also a type of a matter you can relate it with a, a balloon if you fill a balloon empty balloon it, if you inflate it after inflating what you will see the balloon will uh, the balloon will take more space that is because air takes space and empty balloon and a filled balloon uh, if you check the weight then definitely the inflated balloon which is having air will have more weight or more mass that is because air has mass also so that is why we can say air also is a type of a matter so the question now arises here why does air and water uh, differ from each other why do they differ why does a pen uh, differ from a pencil the reason that they are giving here if, if everything is made up of uh, matter only why they are different the answer is because of the kind of the matter or the substance they contain each and everything is made up of different types of matter they can be solid they can be liquid or they can be gas so that is why the substances that air water pen pencil are made up of these substances differ that is why all of these things are different so in chemistry we are studying about substances the definition i will mark again chemistry is the study of substances and when we say substance substance means what we are studying about matter only so also we also study about one more thing that is transformation transformation of the substances what is the meaning of this word transformation now if we talk about transformation it is actually meaning a change transformation is what it is the type of a change and changes take place every moment all around us even in our body also changes take place regularly each and every moment these changes are of two types first change is called as the physical change second change is called as the chemical change what is happening in the physical change in a physical change there is no change in the substance yes no change you have to remember you can mark in your book there is no change in the substance whenever a physical change is happening just an example we will take is there any change in the substance when ice melts water freezes or water boils if the ice is melting what we will get we will get water if the water is freezing we will get ice if the water is boiling we will get water vapor but what all of these are made up of ice water water vapor all the three things are made up of the same ice water and water vapor are made up of water only so all are same thing only that is h2o so all are made of the same type of the substance so that is what we can say is there any change in the substance answer is no the substance remain water in all these changes because there is no change in the substance again we mark the first slide in physical change there is no change in the substance so because there is no change here the substance is not changing when ice is melting when water is freezing when water is boiling there is no change in the substance the substance remains water only in all the changes that is why because the substance is uh, substance is not changing in the change that is going on that is why it is a physical change melting of ice physical change freezing of water also physical change and boiling of water also is a physical change what is the reason reason is just because 
देयर इज नो चेंज इन द सब्सटेंस सो वी कैन ऑल्सो से दैट नो न्यू सब्सटेंस इज प्रोड्यूस नो न्यू सब्सटेंस इज प्रोड्यूस वेन एवर देयर इज एनी फिजिकल चेंज विच चेंज एन एवर देयर इज एनी फिजिकल चेंज then there is no change in the substance or no new substance is produced so i i hope it is clear to everyone nothing new will be there whenever physical change is taking place but in the chemical change what will happen in the case of the chemical change the substance is changing yes the substance changes you compare both the things physical change there is no change in substance but in a chemical change the substance is changing so if the substance is changing what will happen something new will come some new substance will produce there some new substance produces or some new substance is produced i hope it is clear if no new substance is produced in the change it is physical change if something new substance is produced it is a chemical change example we will see here a common example of chemical change is burning just an example they have taken when a paper is burning or when wood is burning what will happen see this paper and wood are made of the same substance called as cellulose and cellulose only is burning and when the paper is burning actually what is burning there cellulose is burning the cellulose will combine with the oxygen oxygen will come from the air so cellulose takes the oxygen from the air and gives two new substance yes please take a note here what they are saying two new substance are produced new substance means chemical change is happening that is why new say substance is coming here so what is the substance produced here carbon dioxide this is the first substance what is the second thing that is produced second thing that is produced here is water so number 1 is carbon dioxide and second one is water vapor so because new substance are produced here that is why we can say the burning of a paper is what burning of paper is a chemical change also burning of wood when the wood is burning then also same thing happen cellulose combines with oxygen and it also gives carbon dioxide and water vapor both the things will be produced in burning of wood so whenever anything is burning not only paper or wood whenever burning is taking place anywhere it is with change it is an example of a chemical change physical change and chemical change both should be clear to everyone Uh, some more examples are given here also when burn in air carbon form carbon dioxide carbon is c chemical formula or chemical not formula chemical symbol of carbon is c it will combine with oxygen when it is burning it will produce co2 same way next example also they are given sulfur form sulfur dioxide sulfur symbol is s capital s it also combines with oxygen and produces so2 so when sulfur burns it produces so2 sulfur dioxide when carbon burns it produces co2 carbon dioxide both the changes you see here what is happening something new is coming co2 and so2 both are gases only so new substance is produced there because the new substance is produced you can say the burning of carbon as well as burning of the sulfur is a chemical change and whenever any substance is undergoing a chemical change we can say it has transformed into another substance this is called as transformation so cellulose also is transformed into carbon dioxide on burning carbon and sulfur also transformed into carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide on burning but in the case of the water what what is happening if you have taken some water uh, in the kettle and you are making tea and the water is boiling then what will happen in case the water is boiling then water vapor will come out of the spout of the kettle what is happening there water is converting into water vapor but still they are all made up of the same things they are not made of the different things so ice water water vapor whenever they are changing from one form to another it is a physical change so both the changes i hope it is clear to everyone physical change and chemical change next we will move further now chemical reactions having been understood uh, we have been been discussed the chemical change we will see here so whenever there is a chemical change happening in a substance we say a chemical reaction takes place please underline this line here word there chemical reaction you can ask in the fill up when there is a chemical change what is happening chemical reaction is happening and whenever any chemical reaction takes place what will produce Now, for example they they can we can take here then that is carbon sulfur cellulose whenever all these things are burning what is happening burning is a chemical change 
so burning of carbon burning of sulfur burning of cellulose all these are chemical reactions even the cooking of food when you are cooking the food when the digestion of food is taking place in our body in fact the growth of our body growth of the plant and the animal body all these things are actually with changes these are all chemical changes and whenever any chemical changes happening what is happening is chemical reaction is happening what takes place is chemical reaction always chemical reaction takes place in a chemical change and when the chemical reaction is going on whatever substance is produced in that reaction it is called as a chemical also whatever substance is used in the same chemical reaction is also called as a chemical so what substance is used as well as whatever substance is produced or formed in the reaction is called as chemical so some examples they have given of the chemicals like the fertilizers used by the used in the used in the agriculture field they like a urea diammonium phosphate that is short form is dap super phosphate of lime ammonium nitrate potassium chloride all these are the fertilizer and because these uh, because they are used in the chemical reactions they are all chemicals only so that is the introductory part now we will move further to how chemistry evolved how it is started so human beings continuously made efforts to lead a better life and they have looked for the to, the different methods to improve the quality of or the living standard has to be better that is what human beings have already uh, tried to do and even today also the scientific community is looking and working hard day and night to do the same to improve the life standard to have a better life of the humanity so they have looked for various ways to improve the quality of the agricultural products we are searching to improve the clothing better type of clothes should be there building material should be good our, our, our construction of the buildings should be in minimum cost and it should be very very strong also it should be having a long life it should be rust resistant all all the things are there we are searching for new and new medicines to cure the number of diseases so these are all the various aspects where the scientific community is working and in this uh, uh, in this search of all these things only chemistry began and has evolved in the course of all these questions just to just to answer these questions only for better variety of agriculture products improve the clothing building material medicines and it is a endless list it is a long list only two or three examples are taken here just for a better life only we are working hard to find a solution to these things and that is how science has started chemistry also has started and has evolved and developed into the modern day science but how it began how it all started so it started from the country known as egypt so the crash uh, the start of the christian era in egypt it was the beginning of chemistry the egyptians were working with metals glasses and dyes they were good in extracting the metals indians were also working with metals especially iron and we also had the ancient science called as ayurveda which prepared medicines from the herbs and medicines so ancient time also science, science uh, was very much developed all, and it was very much prevalent in the scientific community especially in egypt and india now alchemy we will study about alchemy what is alchemy before the chemistry of today the chemistry that we study today is modern chemistry but earlier modern chemistry was not there earlier what was there was is known as alchemy this word alchemy is derived by the arabs from the greek egyptian word kemia the kemi means black the word kemi here means black it is just related to the uh, the the color of the skin actually egyptians or as well as you can say the racial discrimination was there just because the egyptians were doing this thing it is not right to say but still the word kemi means black or egyptians so then later on it has developed but the alchemist the scientists who were working at that time in the field of alchemy they were having two major aims they were having two major aims that first one was out of the greed only that is to convert the cheaper metals less costly metals into the gold gold is a great greatly valued metal it is a very expensive costly metal it is but human beings always wanted more and more gold but it was not very easily found first of all gold was found as nuggets in some rocks and it was very rarely found not easily found but 
the aspirations to gain more and more gold was always there in the human beings and that is why alchemists were making the attempts to convert the cheaper the basic metals like iron and copper into gold it is not practically possible but they did many experiments that they will take iron metal and that iron metal by some chemicals we will convert into gold we will take copper metal and by some chemical reaction we will convert that into gold but they tried for centuries for hundreds of years and some also claimed that they were succeeded some simply claimed they had told a lie it was not at all true but still they said that we have succeeded with the help of a stone what they said that there is a stone called as a philosopher's stone if you keep this stone or rub this stone or on iron or copper that iron and copper metal object will convert into gold but this is all false stories nothing like philosopher's stone nothing like this exists actually so just simply they claimed to gain some fame and all just to become famous and all they were claiming all these things so the scientific community all of the, the claims that they were philosopher's stone all of these the, all these claims were proved false and the alchemists failed what happened all the alchemists were failed there they could not succeed to convert iron into gold because their attempts were scientifically wrong it is not at all possible how can we convert the iron metal into gold how can we convert copper into gold it is not possible so because the scientifically uh, the scientific concept is actually wrong we cannot convert one metal into another simply so this you will learn in higher classes also later on we'll see that metal cannot be converted from one form to another form one metal we cannot convert into another metal by a chemical reaction it is not possible so the experiment the first aim of the alchemist was to convert cheap metal cheaper metals into gold but this was unsuccessful but in searching for such a kind of a, a chemical by which they can convert iron into gold they were doing many experiments so these experiments were useful in important way the human beings were able to know the art of extracting new metals just we were looking for a chemical which can convert iron into gold but we did not find that we did not find that that is okay but we got one benefit also we got the benefit that we have now become proficient we have become uh, expert in in the art of extracting new metals we are able to get uh, to extract new and new metals from the earth crust all the metals are present in the earth crust so we can extract them we have learned that method the indians also extracted iron much before this period like you can see in the iron pillar that is near the qutub minar it has not at all rusted that means indians were very much good in extracting the metals indians had this knowledge this much uh, advanced we were uh, the 24 foot high pillar that is iron pillar it has been exposed to rain and storm in, in spite of that it has not rusted it, there is no rusting that has taken place you can see that photograph this is the iron pillar the photograph is shown here but it is not rusted here why it is not rusting it is present in the open it is rain and storm and all the things are there still no rusting is there what is the reason the reason is simple because the iron it is made up of is very pure there are no impurities because there are no impurities that is why what has happened that is why rusting has not taken place on the iron pillar at delhi in the qutub minar near the qutub minar so that is the first point we have completed the first aim of the alchemist was to convert iron into gold to convert cheaper or baser the basic metals into the gold but it was not possible they claimed that they had found philosopher's stone but that was all false stories next is searching for the elixir of life human beings also wanted to live long how they will live long they try to look for a imaginary liquid imaginary means only in our mind only actually nothing like this is actually nothing is there just all the false things were there that all were saying lie only so what they were looking alchemists were searching for elixir of life what is this elixir and elixir of life elixir is that liquid that imaginary liquid that would cure all the disease and help a person live long what is this if any person drinks this elixir this imaginary liquid then all the diseases whatever disease that person is having he will become fit and fine he will become healthy so if uh, anything any person he or she is drinking this thing he will become healthy is it possible it is not at all possible no chemical is there which is called as elixir just it is an imaginary thing
the alchemists could not find such a such a type of elixir also they were looking for elixir of life what is elixir of life this was also an imaginary liquid that will make a person immortal immortal means if a person drinks this elixir of life the person will never die he will always live on the earth so it is not also not at all possible how it is this is all false thing nothing like this exists so experiments are still made for many centuries hundreds of years passed by but no success without success so elixir of life also could not be achieved alchemy failed totally they could not convert the iron into gold first attempt was to convert the cheaper metals they were trying to convert the cheaper metals into gold were they successful answer is no they were not successful second thing they were doing what they were searching for something they were searching for elixir also they were searching for elixir of life they were searching for elixir and also they were searching for elixir of life but they were successful or not answer is again no they were not successful so alchemy failed why did they fail the fa- they were they were failing because the basics were incorrect their theory was wrong they believed in a theory called as the four element theory what they believed in they believed in a theory theory what what this was called as four element theory this theory was given by the greeks the person people of the people living in greece it is a country in europe so the ancient ancient greek belief says that everything is made up of four substances everything on earth all the substances all the matter is made up of four things earth fire air and water and no substance can be simpler than these four they all said these four things are element what they said earth fire air water all these four things are what they are all elements but actually it is not so actually this is a false theory this theory is wrong in the 4th century bc it was told everything is made up of four substances or four elements earth fire air and water and alchemists also accepted this theory because they were believing or they were accepting this wrong theory that is why they were failing their basics were incorrect and they all failed so from the 17th century this was of the 4th century see here this was of the 4th century and uh, we have come to the 17th now around 1300 years have passed how many around 1300 years have passed and 1300 years later what has happened then science has begun from the 17th century means from the year 1600 onwards you can say this is not exact this is around only approximately around 1600 years uh, onwards only scientists started to discover substance simple than four and the four element theory was disproved who disproved this theory and how it was done that we will be discussing in the next part of this chapter next video will be covering that part so this much is for you for today and that is the homework also for you do read this and try to learn the important parts that that has been that have been discussed in this video as internal questions definitely may be asked from this chapter as well in the exams so that is all for today's video thank you everyone